Welcome back. In this video, we'll be studying binary ionic compounds where we'll consider the naming of some binary ionic compounds and the writing of the chemical formulas of them. So let's dive into the main video. Now, before that, you need these things that I'll be listing. You need a periodic table. Yes, a periodic table, of course. Let's take a look at the periodic table. The charge of group one element on the periodic table is plus one. For group two, it's plus two. For group 18 or zero, it's plus, it's zero, sorry. 17, it's negative one. Group 16, it's negative two. Group 15, it's a negative three. Now for group 14, you can have a charge of plus four and minus four because it can both lose all the four outermost electrons and at the same time gain all of them. For group 13, it has a charge of plus three. So take notes of these ones because we'll be using them as we move on. And before that, let's look at what the binary compound is. A binary compound is a compound that consists of only two elements. Let's look at these ones. H2O, CaO, H2, NH3, Tl. Yeah, and NCl. Per definition, let's cross out the binary compounds over here. We have H2O, um, CaO, NH3 as well, and NaCl. Now you can see the ones that are left out, H2 and Cl. That shows that binary compound consists of only two different elements. So anytime you see compounds that deviate from the definition, they end binary compounds. Now, we have three types of binary compounds. We have the ones that consist of metals with fixed ionic charges, the ones that have metals with variable ionic charges, and the one that consists basically of only the metals, the two no metals, yeah. In our video today, we'll be talking about the ones that have fixed ionic charge. That's the metals with fixed ionic charges. This is a preview of some metals with fixed ionic charges. You can look at them and use them because we'll be using them a lot in the video. So you can pause and take a screenshot or write them. So let's start. Now we begin with writing the ionic formulas. Or the chemical formulas of some binary compounds. We'll build some rules. We have three rules. The first one says that we write the metal first and the non metal second. Later, we write the charge of each ion. Finally, we cause the charges to become subscripts on the opposite ion. So, with these rules, let's consider some examples we have sodium and chlorine so writing the metal and non-metal first we get something like this na as a metal and cl as a non-metal the charge of sodium is plus one a group one element chlorine negative one the final rule is that we cross them out so crossing them they become subscripts on the opposite ion that looks like this so Na will take the one next to the chlorine and C will take the plus one next to what Na. So like this. Now anytime you get a compound like this, that is a compound that has one one as a subscript, the one is ignored. So by ignoring the one, we get something like this. NaCl. Great. Let's consider this ones. Beryllium and chlorine. Now beryllium and chlorine have symbol of BE and CL respectively. So BE is the metal, so it's named first. So write that one first. The charge of BE is plus two. That of CL is minus one. Crossing them to the opposite ion results in a compound that looks like this, where BE has a subscript of one and CL has a subscript of two. Now again, the one is ignored over here. So this is what we get. Let's do a final one. 
calcium and oxygen naming the metal first and the non-metal second we have something like this calcium and oxygen calcium has a charge of plus two and oxygen a charge of negative two so crossing them we get a compound that looks like this ca2o2 now here we can further simplify the subscript because they are common they are they, they can be divided further so we divide by two and it results in this CaO. Yes. The common trick to this is that the charges must balance. That is one thing you should keep in mind. The charges must balance always. Now pause the video without pushing play and see if you can write the chemical formulas between this element. Okay, so let's first check our answers. So we take potassium and fluorine first. Writing the metal first, the metal over here is potassium. So potassium becomes K and fluorine, the non-metal becomes F. Now, potassium over here has plus one. So as you can see, the plus one has been indicated over here. Now the non-metal over here is fluorine, so F. And fluorine has a charge of negative one. A group 17 elements. Causing them, we get a compound that looks like this, K1F1. Again, the one is ignored over here, so we get this. Moving to lithium and nitrogen, lithium is written first because it's a metal, so Li, and it has a charge of what? Plus one. Nitrogen is a non-metal, so it's written second. A symbol of N and a charge of negative three. Crossing these ones, we get a compound that looks like this. Again, the one over here is ignored, so we get this. Taking aluminum and oxygen, aluminum is El is named first. Oxygen also be named second. But the charge of aluminum is plus three, so we indicate a charge. Oxygen is a symbol of O and a charge of negative two. Crossing them out, get a compound that looks like this. Now look at this. This can be further simplified. That is, the subscript can be further simplified. So we leave it like that and result in a compound that looks like this. Now finally, cesium and sulfur. Cesium is a group one element, has a symbol of CS and a charge of plus one. Sulfur is a symbol of S and a charge of minus two, a group 16 element. Crossing them, we get a compound that looks like this. Again, we ignore the one over here. So we get CS2S. So it's basically simple. Now let's consider naming binary ionic compounds. How to provide your names. We also have rules here. The very first rule is that we write the name of the metal cation first. Now the second rule is that you shorten the name of the non-metal and you add the suffix I, D, E to it. Now, the shorting form of the non-metal is usually called the root name of the non-metal. The root name. Now, these are common examples of non-metallic roots that you need to know. So, kindly look at them and take notice of them. So, as you can see, nitrogen, phosphorus, oxygen, sulfur, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So, look, you can see their roots. So, we'll be using this. You can pause the video and write them down or take a screenshot of it or whatever I want to do because it will help us in our video. All right, so let's move on. So we have these compounds, KCL and Li3N. So we're using the rules to name them. And the very first one says that we should write the name of the metal cation first. Now the metal cation over here is K, so potassium is named gently. Now we shorten the name of the non-metal. Now the root name of chlorine is chlor. So adding a suffix ID it becomes what? Chloride. Chloride. So what's the ending? The I D E ending. So simple. Let's take Li3N. The metal again is named first. So lithium. Now consider the subscript 3 over there. Naming the subscript 3 doesn't play any role, so we just ignore that. So you focus on the non-metal, which is nitrogen. 
you take the root name of nitrogen, which is nitro. Adding a suffix ide to it, it becomes what? Nitride. Nitride. Again, taking this of the ending, ide. Now, take this compound into consideration. I urge you to pause the video without pushing play and see if you can name this compound. Okay, so let's go check our answers. Sodium is named because it's a metal, so we name it first. So, sodium, the two again is not taken into consideration, so we ignore that. We focus on the oxygen, which is a non metal, which has a root name of ox. Adding the suffix IDE to it becomes what? Oxide. Oxide. This is the ending once again. On the final one, what do you think the name will be? So simple, it will be magnesium bromide. In the sense that we name the metal first. So the metal here is what? Magnesium. Focus on the non-metal next. We take the root name of the non-metal. The non-metal over here is booming. Has a root name of brom. So adding the IDE becomes what? Bromide. Now the two is not taken into consideration. So ignore that as well. So take a critical look at these ones the id 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 ending so what do you think they do now the clue to all binary compounds is that they end in ide so anytime you come across a compound that has an ending of ide it is a binary compound so that is a clue to identify binary compounds Congratulations on completing your tax on binary RNA compounds type 1. Hope to see you next time. Goodbye.